Nestled in San Jose, the capital of Costa Rica, Casinos Europa has some of the wildest poker games in the world. While Costa Rica is known for its natural beauty and diverse wildlife, the poker tournaments at Casinos Europa are known for two things, service and camisas. Camisa! Camisa! Camisa Maximo, por favor. Camisa! <laughs> the key word that I learned is Maximo Camisa. I don't want to hear that word. That's mean you lose your shirt. And I don't want to get that far down. <laughs> Camisa! Camisa means rebuy in Spanish. And the $500 Costa Rica Classic is the only World Poker Tour event that allows rebuys. And there are a lot of them. Sign my life away. As the players struggle to stay in the game, the girls from the Toby Modeling Agencies keep the cervezas coming. With all it offers, Costa Rica has been described as a slice of poker heaven. The people are very friendly, very sociable, very respectful, ah, beautiful women. There are four women to every man. And at Casinos Europa, you don't have to wait until the afterlife to enjoy it. Just like America, Coca-Cola, beautiful women, and poker. This is all you need. In Costa Rica, Pura Vida means good life. And this is a good life. So Luis, the casino owner, is pushing him around. And he's the major chip here at this stack. He's built his chips up to well over 200,000 now for a commanding lead. Action will be on Jamie. He folds. Jose has a jack nine, different suits. And folds. Dewey folds, and here comes Luis. He's calling with a ten deuce of diamonds, a very famous poker hand. Well, that's all he's got is a ten deuce, and he's calling with it. Yes, Doyle Brunson, the great player, had ten deuce, made it very successful. Here's the flop. Flop is ace nine three, and look at Luis. He comes firing out there, seven thousand. He's looking to take command of this game. He's won the pot. You're right. He's just pushing it in. He's saying, hey, listen, guys, you know, I'm taking this game unless you have something good. Well, there was our man Luis picking up a pot with a 10 deuce of diamonds. He must think he's Doyle Brunson or something. No, you're right. They call him an amateur player. This guy is pushing these guys around. He's pushing the pros around. This guy is very impressive. Well, on the other hand, we have Dewey Tomko over there, very conservative. Dewey's biding his time. Maybe he thinks he's an amateur. He's going to make mistakes later. That's when he's going to capitalize on him. Well, Dewey, I like to call him the phantom. You know, he keeps <laughs> throwing away his hand. Once again, he throws away his he hand. Throws it away. Luis throws it away. They all throw it away. The battle of the blinds. Jamie calls another thousand with a jack nine of club. So we're going to see a flop against an eight three of Jose's. Jamie, the small blind calls the two thousand. Jamie and Jose. So the flop comes queen four hands. deuce. No help to either player. Now there's eight. Jamie. He's bet four thousand. Jamie bets four thousand. And Jose, Jose calls, calls it. 4, Look at this play here. Jose has called 4,000 with a three and an eight. Now, ladies and gentlemen, he's not calling to try to make any kind of draw or any kind of hand. He's playing the man. He's playing here to try to take this pot away from this guy on 4th or 5th Street. Turn card is the six. The six comes Six. off. Now, Jamie checked. He's going to take a steal. Jamie Look at checks. this. He does. He's bet 10,000 at this pot. Bet Whoa. 10, and he's going to win it. This is a, an amazing play by Jose Rosencrantz right here. He called on the Jose flop with absolutely nothing, Vince. Yeah. I guess he was just setting him up, just waiting for one play. He was playing the person, not the hand. An amazing play by Jose Rosencrantz. I love the psychological part of poker. It's beautiful when you know what your opponent's thinking. That was an amazing hand by Jose. Beautiful bluff. You know something? If you we weren't on the World Poker Tour, we wouldn't be seeing his cards. We'd probably think he has aces or kings or queens. That's a beautiful thing. When you can see these cards and see the instincts these players have to make those kind of plays, you can really see what championship poker is all about. Okay. There's Luis, King Deuce. He folds his hand. And now here comes Jaime. Jaime's picked up an ace jack. Looks like he's raising. Yes, he's come in for 6,000. Jaime mean, attempts to fold 6,000. Wow, notice Jose folded an ace nine there, Vince. Yes, he did. Now, Dewey, he's going to call because he has a pretty oh, strong hand this time. Away. Ace 10 of hearts. Dewey Here comes Dewey. He's finally in the pot. He's got ace 10. He's up against ace jack, though. And the flop comes jack 7 3. That's a big flop for Jaime. Oh, Top pair with an ace kicker. Dewey checks it. 
Do we check? Here comes Jaime. He's bet 12,000. And Dewey Tomko lays his hand down. Let me bet 10,000. Now, Vance, notice Dewey had a pretty reasonable hand. He's 10 of hearts. Some players would have moved all their chips in the middle. Now, Dewey Jose Tomko, he likes to play after the flop. In other words, he likes to see flops and then play from there because he thinks he can outplay all his opponents from there. So you won't see him going in for all his chips when he's gambling before the flop. So the Phantom is not going to gamble today yet. Now we're talking about a guy here that used to teach kindergarten, Vince. This guy was a kindergarten teacher for years. He gave up kindergarten to become a professional gambler and has been extremely successful at it. My biggest advantage with poker player is probably experience. Well, you know, you want to play solid, and that's what he does. He's waiting, 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 and uh, these pros have to change gears all the time. And I suspect when he starts getting some hands, he's going to change gears. So it's going to be up to nope. Jamie first to act. Looks at his cards. He's got an ace. He's got an ace seven. With one of the two short stacks now. He's going to have to make a move here sometime. It looks like he's making it right now for everything. He's going all in. He has moved all in on ace high. Jamie Ligator. Jose folds. Now look at this. Dewey. Dewey the Phantom has a pair of tens. He says count it down. Jamie, look at door, just bet now, Jamie has more chips than Dewey, so if Dewey loses this pot, he'll be out of the tournament. But he's got two tens. He's on the short stack. I'll be very surprised if Dewey doesn't call this bit. Well, what are you waiting for? I mean, you got a pair of tens. Go with it. How many times do you have tens wired? It's pretty strong. Well, look, he, at him, look at him concentrating. He knows Jamie. He gives him a lot of respect. He's the first one to come into the pot. But still, you're the short stack here in Dewey's spot. Looks to me like you almost have to play two tens here. Like you said before, he likes to look. He's throwing this away. I he, can't believe this. He laid this hand down. Now that is pretty amazing to me too. Louise is throwing his cards away. That's going to do it. Jamie's won the pot with a strong all-in raise. Well, Dewey Tomko sure made a big lay down there, Vince. Well, I give a lot of credit to Jamie. Went all in. He pushed his little friend, the Phantom Dewey, back into hiding. I'm not consistent at all. Some days I'm a pussycat and some days I'm a shark. Well, I know Dewey has a lot of respect for Jamie. Well, you got to recognize this. Good players can lay down big hands. Weak players call with most anything, but a good player can get away from a hand. Dewey decided to lay down that hand, and let's see what happens from here. Action's on Jose. He's got a 9-5. He folds. Now, Dewey's got an 8-10. Now, look at this. This is crazy. He's raising with this hand. Sure, he'll fold the 10s, but he's going to raise with an 8-10 offsuit. To 7,000 total. Well, he might be steaming a little bit here, Vince. Yeah. And he's going to win the pot. He's going to win the pot. You're right. Absolutely right. Steaming. He's, he's steaming a little bit. He realized, hey, I should have been with the 10s probably. And you know what? Even though I have nothing here, I'm going to raise it. I'm going to take a chance. I'm a little on tilt or steaming. And that means you're betting off of past emotions, mostly negative. Vince, if you are a professional poker player, there are no two ways about it. You must be able to control your emotions at the table. That's very true, but you know that, and I know that. But as Shona Hyatt found out, talking to these professional poker players, they know that it's a lot easier said than done. Shona. It's a jungle out there. If poker is the survival of the fittest, the player who controls his emotion is king. The player who does not ends up being a little lower on the food chain. When you lose a hand that you felt like you should win, that's your money going over to the other guy's stack. And there is an emotional connection. There is, there is a very primal thing that happens when your money is taken away from you. Sometimes you lose it. We're not robots here. We're people. It's an emotional game, no matter how you put it. Taking a seat at the poker table is the start of two battles. The first against your opponents, and the other against yourself. Lose a hand, and you can come back. Lose your cool, and face the consequences. But if the twists of the game turn your world upside down, only you can put it right again. Take a deep breath. And take the time to remind yourself who's in charge here. If you can win that battle and master your emotions, then when it's over, you can let it all hang out.
right back with more from Costa Rica after this. it's legal to carry a gun, but in the casino, you have to check it at the door. Welcome back to the Casinos Europa at the Costa Rica Classic. I'm Vince Van Patten. And I'm Mike Sexton, and our chip leader by quite a wide margin is Cuban-born Luis Milanes, the tournament host and the owner of Casinos Europa. This is pretty amazing. The rich just keep getting richer. Luis is dominating this field. It's pretty amazing. Let's see if somebody could put a little dent in, make a little run at Luis, and knock out the guy they call El Nino. El Nino. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and Luis has picked up nine eight of hearts, suited connector, pretty interesting hand he's calling. Uh, no, 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 look at no, look at Jamie. No, no, no. He bangs with all yeah, his chips in the pot with two eights. Jamie doing 2, it again, going all in. Jose folds. Dewey Tomko folds. Jamie, look at her. Look at Luis folding, looking a little Jamie. irritated. <laughs> he's saying, hey, I got some rifles in the basement. Don't be messing around with me. Well, He's got that kind of hand, a lot of chips. He wants to see a flop. It just pains him to throw that hand away, man. But, you know, impressive move by Jamie. Playing loosey-goosey. It is paying off for him. He really is. Playing well right now. You know, sometimes you play with reckless abandon. You just, you know, you win a hand, you push it in all this next hand. The These guys know it. They do call level. it, and they the lose. Hand, They're the eliminated. There's a lot at stake 3, here. One false move. This isn't a limit game. This is no limit. And it's scary at times. <laughs> Okay, you see Louise is getting touched up there. You know, that's what hey, you call a, a poker makeover. And they're polishing his baldness in the back of his head there. I don't think we're supposed to have makeovers in poker. Okay, with five players left, Luis is still our big chip leader with 220,000 in chips. Jaime, Jamie, and Jose all have the upper 30,000s, and Dewey's a low man with 20-some thousand. Thank you. Okay. And Vince, the price of poker has just gone up. The blinds are 1,500 and 3,000. Okay, that means that they're already involved in the pot. So the tournament won't last 25 days. It speeds up action. Luis is first to act here. He's picked up a 10 and a king. And look at this. He's going to raise with just a 10 king off suit. Jaime quickly folds. Now look at Jamie. Yeah. No, Luis, he says. Bang, he's come over the top for all his money. This guy has a death wish, just <laughs> raising Luis. <laughs> now, Luis says, count him down. Now, it's going to cost Luis about 24 more thousand to call this. Now, I don't believe he should make this call. He's in the commanding lead. But on the other hand, the last hand, I think he was a little distressed. He limped in. He got re-raised. Well, yeah, you're right. I mean, he's got to be frustrated. He is going to call. He's tired of getting pushed around by Jamie. He did. He's got a couple hundred thousand dollars. What the heck? Okay. This is King-10 versus two queens. Jamie's a big favorite here. King-10. Jamie is on You know something? Just drop a king there. And Jamie could be eliminated here. Let's see. Yeah, the, the flop, flop comes, comes nine, 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 three. three. Jamie is in He's hanging around the now. Queens. It's still very good for Jamie. Next card doesn't help him. Okay, Four comes off. Card. Right now, the kingpin's going to need a king, or Jamie Ligonier is going to double up. So, Jamie's so done it. Going to double up. <laughs> Luis gives him a little clap. Very little, I may add. <laughs> now, quite frankly, I see the first leak in the dam here for Luis. That was a very bad move to call an all-in bet with a king-10. It's a difference, Vince, if you're moving your chips yourself. If you're the first one to get in a pot, and no limit hold them, normally the first guy to bet wins the pot. You know, if you're betting your chips, you can't be faulted. When you're calling your chips off like Luis just did, it's a bad tactical move. It's a bad play. Luis paid the price. He doubled up Jamie Ligator. Jamie Ligator loves it when poker players from the U.S. and Europe bring their poker games to Costa Rica, especially when they bring their bankroll. A lot of foreign card players come and start playing the games here, and their first impression is that the Costa Ricans are crazy, that they're going to kill us, that they're going to clean us up. <laughs> 